Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Father, and the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our meditation today is based on the miracle at Cana, where Jesus turns water into wine. You will see that for every warning sign, the sinner would rather neglect or deny, the Son of God stands ready and waiting to make his saving power known. Again, the host of the feast marvels out loud. You have kept the good wine until now. So for the text, let us pray. Lord Jesus, bless thy word, that we may trust in thee. Amen. The most common delusion among young couples about to get married is that whatever annoys you about your spouse-to-be from some irritating habit only you seem to notice to a concern everyone else is taking far more seriously than they should, the common delusion is that it'll get better, simply disappear once you're married. As if the wedding ceremony itself bears a power to wash it away. Ah, you won't keep doing that once we're in a routine. She'll realize after we're married just how important this is to me. When not only do these mild irritations not disappear, they can fester and grow. Once the honeymoon euphoria wanes away into mundane routine, formerly cute bad habits can become daily sources of conflict. And with no end goal in sight, till death do you part, the foolish optimism begins to wear down, and your own cute bad habits flare up into willful transgressions against one another. Why did anyone warn you? Surely someone did. But none of us listen at the time. It's a pattern not unique to marriage. In any matter of life, work, school, friends, children under your roof, children fully grown and out on their own, even church, you can ignore little warning signs here and there of this or that which rubs you the wrong way for only so long till it comes crashing down in a sinking regret of being stuck again. Well, in our gospel lesson today, a young couple is about to hit the first of these crashes and right from the start on their wedding day. Here at the marriage feast in small town Cana, running out of wine just barely into the event, it is a glaring faux pas for which no one individual is solely responsible. It was a red flag situation everyone involved would or should have noticed, no doubt did, yet to some degree ignored. The little bit of wine there was set out in the open for all to see, it would have been impossible for any guest not to look about at the number of those gathered, do the math in your head, and begin whispering your calculation to yourself under your breath. What? Does everyone get a drop? I don't want to be the one to point this out. What more would you expect? from a family like this, regardless, since they do run out of the little they have. Some foolish optimist must have been eager enough to fill his cup first. Nah, there'll be plenty. Even Jesus' disciples are left in the uncomfortable position so early on into their adventures with him, surely no clue what they're doing here at a wedding doomed from the start. Everyone present, 
ignoring the obvious, except Mary, who alone seems convinced this is not the way it has to be, reaches out to the one she knows could help, which after all, could have been the reason she dragged Jesus and his disciples there in the first place, Mary knowing this family, seeing the warning signs from far off, pulls her son to the side to point out to him as if he couldn't see, they have no wine. Only to receive the rebuke. What does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. At first it would seem Jesus offers no help. But in truth, this Jesus' response is the best help he can give. He lets it be. Let's her and the rest, if but for one moment, sit and ponder our quick fixes, our it'll get betters, our I know what I needs, in order to ponder these, the true warning signs in my own soul I'd rather evade as that which Jesus needs you to no longer ignore. See, Mary doesn't beg Jesus to make this frugal fest some lavish highbrow affair. She's simply asking Jesus to sweep what they lack under the rug, make their shame disappear in discreet, almost anonymous way. Instead, Jesus refusing to simply ignore and move on, he takes the moment before him and seizes it for his own purpose. By providing so much more than he'd been asked, making water into good wine in abundance, Jesus transforms our ignorance concerning these warning signs of our sinful condition into the first sign of his mission to save. As John clarifies, this was the beginning of signs through which Jesus manifested his glory. In every situation you've been lacking, the fact that his hour had not yet come, well, that's more than obvious. But what our gospel lesson reveals is that which could never be discerned apart from this gospel word, that Jesus is indeed right there. That in each of your trying situations, Jesus stands ready and waiting to reveal his power, to reveal himself to be the savior you need. The sign of Cana being this, that he who sees all those signs we'd rather neglect or deny in marriage, work, this world, your own soul, came to save you from a shame far worse than any social embarrassment in the eyes of other people. He came to save you from the eternal shame of a condemnation before your God. As Jesus makes clear, before performing the miracle, that properly speaking, my hour has not yet come. And for the next three years from this wedding day on, would continue to interact the same with fellow children of Adam, incapable of breaking our many faceted delusions in a life riddled with disappointment, bickering, sickness, and death, until the day arrives for Jesus to announce to his disciples that it was high time for him to do something about it all. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Going on to explain to them just how he was about to make all our irritating habits disappear using the imagery of wine again. Shall I not drink the cup which my Father has given me? 
This cup is the cup of wrath. Jesus willingly drank in our place in order to redeem you from the eternal death our sins deserve. The day Jesus' party came to an end, and every good thing which had been his from eternity was stripped from him in public shame. At first his disciples do their best to deny these signs, none of them subtle, until when it becomes far too intense to ignore, they try to sweep it under the rug with a sword, like most things we'd rather not deal with in life. But rebuking these our ways, Jesus follows through on his Father's plan to atone for all our quick fixes by being mistreated himself. Mistreated by the priests of the temple, by Herod and Pilate, by the crowds lining the streets of Jerusalem, on up to the place of the skull. Each soul gathered that day oblivious to the divine wonder being worked before their eyes until at the height of his anguish Jesus asks once more for just a bit of water I thirst begs for the same basic ingredient with which he gave Cana's wedding such joy that he might turn this his final sip into the new wine of your eternal life. By maturing on the vine of his cross to the peak of righteous perfection, to be preserved in a grave just up until the hour appointed for him to rise in victory. That his blood, red and ripe with salvation, might wipe you clean declare you righteous before the eternal throne of God, thereby offering you the very finest he has to offer as the assurance that no matter what you receive in this life or don't, yes, indeed, everything is now right between you and your God. For everything you've missed, Every moment you should have known better. Every time you find yourself disappointed in life and in yourself, turn to Jesus in what word and sacrament and find him still there, ready and waiting to heal your soul in full through the forgiveness of sins. As we sing, Jesus, thy spirit and thy word, thy body and thy blood afford my soul its dearest treasure for jesus death and jesus resurrection bear the power to turn any tear of this life into the wine of eternal joy in him his cross his empty tomb the guarantee that god's mercy toward you can never never run dry a pledge of peace from god i see when thy pure eyes are turned to me to show me thy good pleasure. Take note that Jesus accepted the invitation to Cana, chose to show up knowing quite well the messes we let linger, yet fully aware of every obvious sign he's right there from the wedding's start. So, too, he's there for you, has, in fact, been there the entire time, whether in our foolishness we know it or not, as his pardon blessing declares, Lo, I am with you always. You might object. And in the midst of any good thing you're convinced you lack, object we do. If he's here ready and waiting, why don't I see it? I've repented, I believe. Why doesn't he just fix this? Ah, with questions like that, don't be surprised you get your own share of my hour has not yet come moments. Not with that attitude. Rephrase the question. Why don't I see what I want? 
And there you have your answer. He's there, ready and waiting. But sometimes what he has to say is his law. Which means if you're still looking about for him to help, you're still somehow clinging to what you want. But once we can admit that we're the ones who have ignored and let linger, that incapable of addressing the real problem of sin, we deserve no good thing, then there he is, and the good wine of forgiveness yours, for you to drink deeply any moment. This is the hard work of repentance and faith. Hard work he's ever eager to make happen deep in your heart through the power of his word, and thereby renew your perspective on life as a whole by replacing this foolish optimism with faith in the firm grasp of his gracious hand, by transforming every warning sign we'd rather not have to admit into the opportunity to call once more upon his precious name, all because the Son of Mary stands ready and waiting to bless your home, your work, your every interaction with man and God through his life-giving word, a savior ever faithful to guide you into the eternal feast of love. That feast, the marriage feast of heaven, being the end goal of each of us all in him. Well, everything you do lack, whatever you must yet endure here and now, all it can be then is proof but one more obvious fact that that ultimate hour is not yet come. Look for it. Wait on his time. It'll be here soon enough. And when it is, when the final day does dawn, you'll get to marvel out loud yourself. You really have kept the good wine till now. Now the peace that passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Praise.